Hi everyone, Bea here. Welcome to chapter 2. In this chapter, we're going to learn how to install WordPress manually and automatically. We're going to learn how to do this in both ways. Um, not all hostings have the option to install this automatically. So, in a way, it's good to learn how to do it manually. Um, it might sound scary, but really, don't worry. It is going to be easy. So, are you ready? Let's go! First thing you have to do is download WordPress. So visit wordpress.org and download the latest version of WordPress. As you can see, this is the site and here is where you have to download WordPress. Um, please do not be confused with wordpress.com. So there's one thing called wordpress.org and another thing called wordpress.com. The differences are is .org, as you can see here, is the real WordPress, is the popular website platform and is 100% free and all you need is a domain and a web server, a web hosting. And what about WordPress.com? So WordPress.com is more a platform for hobby bloggers. Um, whenever you start a blog and you name it and it will automatically generate um, a domain it would be something like, let's say, if you want um, a cooking site, just say like my favorite, my favorite recipe. So the domain, that's the title of the blog, and the domain would be something like my favorite recipes dot wordpress dot com. So that is the difference. Um, if you have your own domain and your own hosting server, we have to go to wordpress dot org, and here is where you have to download it. Okay, so just click here and it will download. Second step is to upload WordPress to your hosting. So once you've downloaded WordPress from wordpress.org, you will get a zip folder. So unzip it and this is what you will find. I'm going to open the folder here. So these are the files that you need to upload to, to, to your hosting. And it's pretty easy. So what we're going to do is in this tutorial, we're going to do it via FTP using a program called FileZilla. And I'm back to our client's um, control panel. So as I said before, um, our client has hired HostGator for this. And but no matter what hosting service you have, it's basically the same. So first thing, you, if you don't have an FTP account, you have to create an FTP account. So get to your control panel and find something like FTP accounts to create a new one. So I'm going to create one so you guys see. So these are all the, the details that you need to enter. So let's say um, click at the login is visual and add a password. I'm just going to click a random one over here or you can even click on password generator if you want to. So whenever you're done, you are just, you just need to uh, click on create FTP account. Okay. So I have my FTP account here created. Here open configure FTP client because these credentials here plus the password are what we're going to, to use in FileZilla to connect with the server. All right. So I'm going to open FileZilla. So first thing here, we open file. So I'm going to do this file site manager. So here is where you have to, let me show you FTP username. It's this one over here. So just copy it and paste it. As you can see, you need the user, you need the host port to and the password. Okay. So whenever you're done, click on connect. So this is the way how to connect to your server. Okay, so it's done. So as you can see here, I'm sorry, I'm just going to bring myself up here because you cannot see <laughs> the where we have to store all our files. And now here is where we have to drop all the files from WordPress. So now it's been connected. So I'm going to open this WordPress folder again. 
and copy all. This is the root folder, by the way. This is where, because if you have more domains, um, it will also show. So what you have to do is to copy it in the root folder. So I'm just going to drag it here and let it copy. And it will take a few minutes to completely upload. Third step is create a database. So we're back to our client's control panel here in HostGator. And what we have to do is find this, my SQL database wizard. Okay, just look for it and click. So what we have to do is we have to create a database uh, with a name and I think a user and a password. You have to store all these credentials because you're going to need them for step number four. So, okay, so create a database. This is the database name. Let's say visual course will be the database name. Click next step. And here we're going to create the user. So the username will be, I'm going to click, I'm going to type mine, sorry, and a number. And here we're going to type the password and confirm the password again. Or you can use the password generator and just click on create user. And in this step, click on all privileges. Okay, so everything here is selected and then click on next step. And when we see this message, it means that we have completed the task of creating a database. Now we've already uploaded WordPress to our hosting. We've also created a database and now it's time to install WordPress into our domain. So when all of these previous steps are done, uh, what you have to do is visit your domain. So the first thing you will see is this. So this is how we install WordPress. And here's where you choose the language. So by default, I'm going to install it in English from United States. Click on continue. And now this is why I told you to, to store to all these credentials, the database, the user and the password, because we'll be needing it now. And then I'm going to click on let's go. So the database name, I'm going back to my control panel, just in case. So you can still copy it from, from here. Username, it's this username that we've created. I'm just going to type it. And password, just delete it. And I've copied it to my clipboard. And we'll leave the rest as it is okay so click on submit then click run the installation here wordpress requires you to add some information for example the site title um, this client works in the film industry and in animation so the site title will be 3d vfx producer. We can add a username. So let's say I'm going to add the same The username will be this will be the username and I'll just leave this generated password. Also, we can add an email here. So I'm just going to add our email. So I'm afraid I cannot scroll down a little bit more, but I want to show you, just going to minimize this a little bit. Here you can see the search engine visibility. You can discourage search engines from indexing this site. So if you're still, if the site is being built, um, you should click on this. Okay, so I'm just going to click on this while, we, while we're building it. So Google won't, won't index this, but we have to remember when you, whenever you're done to deselect this option. All right. And now whenever you're done, I'm just going to minimize this a little bit more. Just click on install WordPress. Okay, I'm going to zoom back in. So WordPress has been installed. And then you just have to log in with the, the account that you have just created with those same details. So click on login and then you'll see 
how we're back to WordPress. Let's type the username. And the password. Click on login. Let's say I don't want iCloud to save this. And if you see something like this page, it means that you have successfully installed WordPress and you've created a user and this is the backend. You have accessed the backend. So congratulations. Uh, this seemed a bit scary in the beginning, but as you see, it's pretty easy if you follow all these steps. In many hostings, you can find the option of installing WordPress automatically with just a few clicks. So instead of you manually going to WordPress.org, downloading the zip file, um, creating a database, then installing WordPress into your domain, you can do this with just a few clicks. So search in your, in your control panel if you have this option or contact your hosting if you can't find it. And here in HostGator, for example, I have this option which says WordPress one click installation. So I'm going to click here. So what we have to do now is just follow the instructions. Here says we're going to install the version of WordPress 4.9.4. I'm going to scroll down a little bit. What you have to do is basically follow the instructions that you'll see on your screen. So first is select the domain and click on next. Here we have the install settings. I'm going to scroll down a little bit and you have to add a blog title and admin user, first name and last name, admin email. So let's start typing, let's say 3D producer, admin user, um, first name is going to put something random like Ned. Stark and admin email. I'm going to type hours. And here you have to leave this selected. As you can see, you're automatically creating a new database for this installation. And agree the terms of service and click on install. The installation is pretty fast and you get your installation details here. What you can do now is log in. So I'm going to open this in another tab. This is how we're going to access our backend. Well, now we're going back to our control panel and here we're going to use this username and the password. Remember to store this in a safe place. These details are important. So. I'm going to just copy paste this and you'll see. I'm going to click on login. I don't want to save this. And we are here in the back end. This means that we have successfully installed WordPress in our domain with just a few clicks. Right now I'm going to view the site and there's probably a template that has been installed. There it is. If you manage to access your backend with the username and the password that has been created, that means that you have successfully installed WordPress into your domain. So congratulations. It wasn't that bad in the end, right? Anyways, we're going to move on to chapter three, where we're going to be designing the site with a free visual builder. So if you don't want to miss any chapter, then don't forget to subscribe and to click on the bell icon to get notified whenever the chapter is out. So guys, thank you for watching. See you next chapter.